everyone. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to join me to learn more about the Disaster Partner Hub. My name is April Wood. I'm a senior director on the American Red Cross National Headquarters Disaster Operations Team. And over the last year, I have been working with dozens of organizations across the voluntary sector space, private sector, as well as some government partners to really build a collaboration platform with the intent of providing enhanced situational awareness and data-driven decision-making and insights. So it's my pleasure today to share with you some of the work that's been completed. Um, we have more than 20 multi-agency applications that have been developed in the hub. And so I wanna do a quick walkthrough with you and give you an opportunity to see some of the work that's been completed. Bear with me while I share my screen here. So here you are seeing the homepage for the Disaster Partner Hub. And on the homepage, we have our photos of some of our partners doing the work with alongside us with the Southern Baptists. We have our ongoing disaster response and our planning and resources page, which I'll come back and share a little bit more about. And we also have four areas of service delivery that we've been doing a lot of work around feeding operations, call center data, damage assessment information, and shelter operations. We have a suite of partner situational awareness briefs um, that are located here. Uh, these partner briefs, we have created more than a dozen or so since March of 2020, garnering more than 23,000 views across the partner space of organizations that respond to disasters and provide recovery operations as well. Some of the data you might find in these partner briefs that are event specific might include everything from power outage data to Red Cross sharing our detailed damage assessment information or shelter locations um, for both congregate as well as in some cases non-congregate shelter data. We also have an embedded story map on the homepage just to have an opportunity to talk about some of the multi-agency feeding operations with our partners, such as the Salvation Army. We have an open search function to be able to look within the hub and identify data sets that may not be highlighted in any of the applications that are featured. We've also created about a half dozen training pages that are available, they're self-paced, there are some embedded how-to videos for some of the web applications, just a nice array of information on how to both share data within the hub as well as export data out of the hub as needed. And then just a huge thank you to some of our contributing data partners. Um, so you can see here a wide variety of organizations and we have more than 100 data sets within the hub currently. About a third of those are automated at this point. On the ongoing disaster response page, um, this is really meant to be a high level um, opportunity and space to be able to see some statistics cards that we currently, as of March 30th, have 63 non-congregate shelter locations that are open across the country. We have our incident tracker application, which really shares our information at the American Red Cross and what we're receiving in our Disaster Operations Coordination Center with our partners to provide greater visibility into what's taking place. So things you might see in this application, the green balloons are actually levels of disaster relief operations that are active for the American Red Cross. We have initial incident reports that come into our operations center. So one example here is a single family fire, unfortunately, that occurred in Las Vegas, resulting in a fatality. Um, so just additional detail here with triggers for reporting to our disaster operations center. And then some of the red circles are just uh, recent river gauge flooding that's taking place with the recent storms across the Southeast. We also have a number of Survey 123 um, embedded here. Um, this one is to report service delivery for our partner organizations that feed the dashboard called the Who, What, Where dashboard, um, which really highlights um, which organization is providing what services in what locations. So here on this dashboard, you can see that the Baptists have some chainsaw crews um, from some of the hurricanes down in the Gulf. We also have the Mennonites that are providing a number of rebuild project sites. And this is a fairly new application that we're continuing to socialize that we really haven't piloted as of yet, um, but are looking to do so here shortly. And as I navigate over to the planning and resources page, here we have an application um, that was created to really highlight a number of just different layers of data. So we have a faith-based um, example here of the navy blue dots on the map. The symbology represent um, the Pentecostal church network. 
where we have the opportunity to see where the church locations are as a faith-based partner across the country. We have um, rural independent living centers, Feeding America food banks, NAACP branch locations, as well as Walmart stores with a live feed of open and closed stores. And as I navigate over to some of our dashboards, so I mentioned those four areas of feeding operations, call center data, damage assessment, and shelter operations. Here we're using the Experience Builder um, app to be able to create a dashboard where we're representing Red Cross call center data. This is set and filtered to this month. Um, so because it's nearing the end of the month, we've taken in um, more than 28,000 calls across the country. And you can see on the dashboard that we have 67% requests for financial assistance, 46% requests for food, and 40% requests for water. Um, so really just providing some additional insight using a heat map um, type dashboard to see where the calls are coming from across the country. We also have the ability to sort by incident type if you wanted to hone into a more event specific um, area of the country. We have the opportunity to partner with Crisis Cleanup to build a data automation where we're able to identify their cases that are open currently in their system. Once again, the ability to filter by incident is important. So if I were to select um, Hurricane Hannah, for instance, you could see that it navigates quickly to the southern um, southeast area of Texas where we have 350 cases that were requested for through crisis cleanup. 4% for tarping, 4.5% um, for trees, and about 14% for debris removal at this point. So it really provides you better situational awareness into where the calls are coming from and what the requests are from the callers that are making those calls for help. One of my favorite applications we've been able to develop as I navigate over to Hurricane Sally here, and I'm going to set my date range back to September, is the Partner Feeding Summary Dashboard. Um, so for the first time ever, we're able to see um, some of the multi-agency feeding that's taking place. And so we're working with all the national feeding organizations. Uh, because this is near real-time data, you can see there's only one feeding resource currently listed for Hurricane Sally still, and that's the local food bank that's continuing to support the community. During the peak of Hurricane Sally, we did have 45 open operational sites. And you can see on the bottom down here, there are 32 sites for points of distribution from World Central Kitchen. We had six Southern Baptist kitchens that were operating. We had five points of distribution for the American Red Cross, as well as the local food bank and a kitchen operated by Operation Barbecue. We are continuing to work with other feeding organizations such as the Salvation Army as we identify the process for sharing data between organizations and being able to see the comprehensive um, full picture of what's taking place from a feeding standpoint. But as part of this dashboard, we're able to see the trends um, or beginning to be able to see trends that we've never seen before. So here you can see um, the peaks of the, the curve as the bar graph goes up and comes back down and tapers off from a community feeding perspective. You can see by organization the number of meals prepared and served on any particular day, um, which really just helps to understand where the bulk of the feeding is coming from and what the volume looks like and the tapering down effect that's occurring. We also have a shelter dashboard that we've included here. So uh, mentioning the non-congregate shelter, operating in the COVID environment we're operating in, having the ability to understand where we're providing safe shelter, disasters continue to occur. So having the opportunity to use hotels or dormitory style housing in a non-congregate shelter setting is important to be able to provide that safe shelter during emergencies for people that need it most. We do have the congregate shelter in here, but that is zero today as there are no current congregate shelters open in the national shelter system. There's no PII data in the hub, no personally identifiable information in the hub. All data is aggregate and anonymized. And we are um, looking to share information across the sector from private sector to government agencies to voluntary nonprofit agencies as well. Navigating over to the damage assessment comparison map here, you can see that I have pulled up Medford, Oregon. So there are a number of automated data sets that are included here in this web application. We have the ability to see the grid squares for FEMA individual assistance registrations. The darker the square, the higher the number of registrations. We also have the ability to see the Red Cross detailed damage assessment displayed here by the circular symbology on the map of the red, orange, black, um, symbols that are listed here. In addition, we have the Civil Air Patrol aerial imagery that is provided. 
So if I were to click on one of the points of imagery here, we would be able to see what that looks like. And so this provides a tremendous value of not having to put volunteers' boots on the ground in harm's way in an environment that might be particularly unsafe, such as wildfire conditions. You can see here that unfortunately this particular neighborhood suffered um, severe catastrophic damage from this fire um, with the individual homes that are um, no longer standing on this particular block. Another example of using the damage assessment comparison map is in Lake Charles, Louisiana, where you're able to see a number of layers listed here for everything from NOAA M satellite imagery to, once again, detailed damage assistance by the detailed damage assessment by the American Red Cross, as well as a number of other data sets that are available. All of this is automated, so it does show up in near real time and is available um, to be viewed during a particular disaster event. The ability to see 18 different pieces of data here located within this, so different disasters, because Louisiana has been impacted so many times, I'm just gonna click through here. There are a number of different disasters that have been declared by FEMA. There are also a number of different data sets located here as I click through the 18 data points that are listed. So a plethora of information is available, as well as the opportunity to be able to look at the imagery once again um, that is shared. And finally, as we wrap up today, um, going back to those, those partner briefs that I mentioned on the homepage of the Partner Hub, where we have um, some of our individual event-specific partner briefs, here for Hurricane Laura, um, we still have an active brief where we have the opportunity to once again share some of our damage assessment um, resources. And so here is our detailed damage assessment from the American Red Cross that is presented in a dashboard format. So this is more helpful using the event specific data as opposed to maybe the web comparison, the web app that we have for damage assessment. So here you can see just within our map viewing area that we had more than 3,400 destroyed homes, unfortunately, 8,800 plus with major damage, 19,000 plus with minor damage, and more than 15,000 affected, um, with total assessments being more than 58,000 just for Hurricane Laura and Marco events that took place in the fall of 2020. The hub, once again, is not open to the general public. We are looking to share it with operational partners in the response and recovery space. And we're excited to have the opportunity to share this with you um, today during the, the NAFSIG conference. So thanks again for joining us for a bit. Um, we appreciate your time and please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, once again, my name is April Wood and I can be reached at april.wood at redcross.org. Thanks again, have a great day.